you would have been where that white car is, that would have been where the pickup is. He would have hit you right there, and you would have flew clear over here. secondary injury but from where you landed not from being hit and within half of the pull the bumper out of your legs, uh, in your, your leg you know this side of your legs fine they didn't, they didn't get any injuries there you got a sprained ankle there but you didn't get any injuries that's that's why my brain was stabilized the neurosurgeon came in and he was at me surprised and he was like we don't have to do any surgery i looked at him i'm like great bye you know i was i was really really concerned that my brain was bleeding because i mean that's that's something that's it's hard some hard to uh recover from and the fact that i can see out both eyes i can read miracle. Well, I know this, every night, every night during in the mornings, your mom has prayed, constantly been praying for you, and uh, prayer works. And I know she's prayed for you, protection for you. Um, I know that I've prayed that God opened the doors that need to be opened and closed the doors that need to be closed. And, and there's been opportunities through this that, that have opened up for you. survive the fact that i did survive is god's way of saying no not today you still have a destiny you still have something to do it might not be this it might not be that it's this or that it's my job to figure out what it is and i mean he's he's protected me throughout my life and there's a reason why i'm still alive not 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 a worldly reason not just because the senator says oh you know we're gonna have to uh, quarantine everybody for COVID. You know, oh, truckers are essential, so 
you have your you're a major part of the backbone of the United States. No, it, was, it was God's decision to say, not today. And that's, that's emotional for me. I mean, he didn't tell me exactly, but for emotions and actions and, I mean, everything that happened, I have an emotional connection to this. And so I know that I have more to do on this earth. My time is not ready. Well, another thing that that's amazing was uh, there was a military medic that was on the scene, and nobody knows. Well, I'm sure somebody knows his name somewhere, but we haven't been told what his name is. And for him to be there and, and be acting immediately, even before the ambulance arrived. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And God, God had protection. God protected your right side um, to show that that He is um, He is powerful enough to protect you, save, spare your life. He had a medic here to respond immediately. And you know, I've served I've served God a long time, and and um, serving Christ gives you fulfillment. Serving Christ, you cannot get the fullness of life without serving Christ. And to begin that journey, it's simple. It's, uh, sometimes it's so simple that people that think they're smart miss it. And it starts with surrender. And surrendering your life to Jesus and saying, you know what, I'm tired of doing doing life the way I want to do it. I'm tired of, of getting the results that I'm trying to get. And I want your results for me. I want your destiny for me. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. I want to walk in your ways and fulfill the uh, experience of fulfillment uh, of everything that you have for me and, and live up to my potential, the potential that actually God, God created. It says that he has created us in our mother's womb and he has created us for a specific purpose and a destiny. And the only way that that is possible is to surrender. And if you're watching today, to begin that journey, you simply just surrender with this prayer. Just say this after me. Heavenly Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I'm sorry for living ways the way that I wanted to live. And I just, I surrender right now. I surrender to you and I want to live for Jesus Christ. And if you said that prayer, if you, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if that's you and you've, you've made that prayer, you made that confession, you, you made that change that you surrender to Christ, I would love to hear. And uh, just send me a text or call me 620-624-4201. Again, 620-624-4201. I would also love to hear how God has protected you in um, in a situation. How God has has um, how His angels have come to your aid and protected your life. Share that in the comments below. God loves you, and until next time, have a blessed day. What happened from a, from, a, from a pickup hitting me on a motorcycle and all I got is a skinned knee? So did the pickup hit you? Because in my head, what I'm seeing is since you were in front of Corbin, pickup hit Corbin, Corbin hits you I don't and know. you spun out. I don't know if a pickup hit me or Corbin hit me, but... In my head, that's what makes sense. Well, I know all I know is I, was, I saw it and I gunned the bike and I was hoping Corbin would follow me because it was like there was, there was no way to do anything else, anything else. But I, I don't know. The point is that the impact was with the right, and there's nothing. And there's the nothing. And the Even with side. Corbin's bike hitting me, with Corbin's bike hitting me hard enough to spin me around, there's no injuries. Yeah. When I first saw you, I thought that's all you had was just a skin me. Because you were <laughs> sitting up like this, like on your phone. I was like, man, mine didn't even get touched. <laughs> Shoot, I got a nail that's like this long in this leg. <laughs> They took my knee apart and they hammered a nail in there all the way to join both bones together. Did they do that thing with the drill? I don't know. Dale, Dale told me to tell the drill pilot hole. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but see, I can do like girls now, except it's not a bra. <laughs> I didn't think about it until Caesar and I were talking today, but this is nothing less than supernatural. Nothing less than supernatural. I mean, I thought we were lucky, and I figured we had God's protection, but it's impossible that neither one of us have injuries on our right side. It's impossible. You know, at first my explanation was, well, they probably just caught the back end of my motorcycle, and I thought, no, according to Chuck and everybody else, there's damage all the way up the side of the motorcycle which means that the whole motorcycle got hit. How is it my leg didn't get crushed on that side? If it was hit, impact hard enough to flip the entire motorcycle around, how did it not break this leg? How did it not even cut this leg? That's why I was telling Caesar that something is like supernaturally materialized on our right side. Can you ask Chuck to save that bell on Corbin's bike? I asked well, he, will. he won't take nothing off of it until we... Well, I asked Drew to get it, he forgot. Attitude the, whole time. the cops have attitudes against bikers a lot of times. I don't know if you remember when Bobby Strait got in that accident in Hooker, Oklahoma. Or not Bobby Strait, Kyle Strait. He got in a motorcycle accident in Hooker, Oklahoma, and the cops were standing around, and Bobby was screaming at him to call the ambulance, and they're like, ah, just let him live and die. That's what the cops said yeah. in Hooker. Most cops don't like bikers. Yeah, I was thinking about it. The uh, the fact that like my motorcycle is a lower bike compared to other bikes, and it's a truck. So like, it should hit you like without waste time. It should have hit me first before you even. It should have broken ribs, broken arms, cut broken leg, broken thigh. I, mean, I have a few bruised ribs, but it's a couple scrapes. That's really nothing. Yeah. Well, it makes me think of John Osteen's daughter when. They sent a bomb to her. This is what made me think of it when Caesar was telling me. They sent a bomb to John Osteen's office, and it blew up, and uh, his daughter opened the package. And after they put the fire out, and the walls of the office were completely blown away, and there's burn marks and fire and everything. When they put it all down, they came in the office, and right behind the desk, there was an outline of an angel uh, around the, around right where she was sitting. And it was like when the bomb went off at the speed of light, an angel materialized in front of her and held out his wings and then disappeared. And she was just sitting there like this. The whole office is gone. And she's just sitting there like this. Like, what the heck? You know, the office is gone. And all the windows are out. And everything's black except this white outline of the angel. And um, um, that's what made me think of it is when because Cena was the first one that said it, that Corbin's injuries are on his left, and I said, on his left? Because I always thought, well, Corbin's injuries are on his right, mine are on my left. That kind of makes sense, or could make sense. But then when he was telling me that, I thought, that's impossible. It's impossible. Well, I know that's supernatural, because I was able to start walking four days after. Well, here's so the I, thing I, is. I got my balance, and I was actually walking four days. I plan on riding the motorcycle to church on Sunday, two weeks. I just got to get Chuck to get one of them fixed. I'm assuming the... We've got three wrecked bikes in Chuck's shop right now. We get to start, start charging the storage after a while. Tell him to start working on the Indian. <laughs> he, was, he was mad. How about what? He was mad. People, outlaw bikers don't like people who get bikes. Have you heard anything from Natasha? No. Well, apparently, I'm sure they're going to want my insurance and my driver's Paul, license number and all that. Paul texted her, and yeah. Paul's been calling the police Who's department. Paul? He's the, he said yeah, you, you don't know. The car. Yeah. That he was the, the lady. He was the passenger. That the lady was his mom. Paul and Teresa. Well, all I saw is when I was flying sideways, it was like I was a stunt rider in one of those jumps. Mm -hmm. I was going sideways, and I was looking, and I could see her face, and her eyes were that big and round. It looked like her hair was standing up like this, and she was screaming like, and uh, I just think, remember thinking, man, this is going to hurt. Because I've had a few accidents, and every time I do, I think, 
when I'm getting ready to hit, I think kind of that. I think, ouch, this is going to hurt before it actually hits. And that's what I thought. I thought I was going to bounce off and then I was going to have to get up and see if the bike was rideable again. But I could see you getting in a wreck and you say, ouch, and then bounce off and it doesn't hurt. Right. <laughs> I could see that happen. Yeah, the EMTs and everybody, actually, they moved me 10 times. Before from the, time, they... from the time the accident happened to the time they finally did surgery on my leg and gave me pain medication, they moved me 10 times. And it was probably very painful probably more pain than you've ever experienced <laughs> and you can feel like on my leg and my shoulder every time they like grab me and pull me from one bed to another or grab me and pull me over to the CT stand scan pull me from CT scan oh, back to the yeah. bed pull me from the bed over to x-ray and then twist my arm and leg around so they get different shots and then pull me back onto the bed and then pull me back onto x-ray again because I went to x-ray twice and CT scan twice and pull me back onto the bed and then pull me back onto the bed and CT scan and pull me back onto the regular bed and then take me upstairs and pull me onto my regular bed. They moved me 10 times and every time it was like you could feel your bones grinding together and popping and everything, it hurt a lot. But they said I was one of the few patients that didn't cut them out. Who's not there? The uh, occupational therapy guy when he was working with my hand one day, or my arm, he was making me do exercises with this arm. And I was hurting and I was like, ouch, 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 stop, and stuff like that. And he said, yep, I just made your nephew mad earlier today, or something like that. And I said, did he get mad at you? And he said, yeah, a little bit. So I don't know what he did to you, but, <laughs> but he said you got mad at him. <laughs> it wasn't major or anything like that. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I can't remember. I think it was about walking around or something. Yeah. Yep.